So perhaps hmm. you could just tell us a little bit about how your clinic works here. Well, it's a multidisciplinary, or the better term is interdisciplinary, which suggests that people work together. That's interdisciplinary, uh, one-stop shop. Uh, it extends over a day and a half. Um, and the, the clinic process, the, the clinic uh, schedule has evolved. So, I mean, the, the reason that it's set up this way is as a result of a lot of it experience and a lot of thought and planning. Um, I ran a clinic in uh, Houston starting back in 1984, which was probably one of the first clinics in this country. But we really didn't know what we were getting into and, and we had an enormous number of people who came and uh, it was quite fragmented and helter-skelter and uh, there wasn't any kind of coherent um, presentation. So when I came here, uh, I requested from the administration that uh, we set up a planning group, and we actually spent six months meeting weekly to you know, think through how we wanted to do this, what areas we wanted to cover, what disciplines should be involved. <clears throat> and the hospital was a bit different then, so we had access to more resources than we have now. We had a, uh, a very active uh, respiratory uh, lab so we could get pulmonary function tests, arterial blood gases. No more? No more. It's all across the street. It's, it's close, but it's not in the same building. And uh, we had speech pathologists heavily involved because we were doing a lot of work on uh, swallowing problems. So in any event, it, it's evolved over the years, but the basic um, features have been all, almost the same. A, a, a clinic, because of the complexity of the average patient who presents to a clinic, it just didn't make sense to try to do it all in one hour or two hours. I mean, that was just, it's not practical. And you, can't, you can't do a thorough job and you leave the patient, um, I think, without a full explanation of their symptoms and a coherent plan of how to deal with their problems. So that's been sort of our objective. Um, so they, they come in the first day and they see um, the physical therapist for roughly an hour, then they see the occupational therapist for roughly an hour, and then they see myself. Or when I've had another physician, they would see that physician. Um, <clears throat> and each of us had a team that we worked with. The physician who was here for a number of years was an excellent uh, colleague who uh, just recently left. So it's just myself at the present time. In any event, um, when I see the patient, the focus is on their polio history, their general medical history, other medical issues, uh, problems. And then with a really uh, very incisive look at their neurologic picture. So not only neurologic history, but a uh, very comprehensive neurologic exam. Because I want to make sure that there isn't some other neurologic explanation for new weakness, um, fatigue, etc. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, I mean, post polio syndrome is a diagnosis by exclusion, and I take that very seriously, so that I really tried to look at all the other kind of obvious uh, possible neurological and medical diseases that could be causing the symptoms. Um, so that's sort of my task. And then the PT and OT have each of their own separate areas. And, and the nice thing is then I don't have to do you know, sort of a, a shoddy, you know, half of a baked physical therapy workout. I mean, you know, that's done by an experienced uh, therapist. And the same is true for the OT and then the social worker. So anyway, uh, the second part of the first day after lunch, let's say, if there's any lab tests, x-rays, or electrodiagnostic testing, that's done in the afternoon. Um, 